Okay, so as we continue on with MP2, what we're gonna do in the remainder of this lesson is talk about our the workflow that we're developing to allow a user to add their favorite place to the map, which is neat, right? I mean, this sort of brings this participatory component to this app um, and gives you a sense of how something might like, like this might actually be done. Um, all right, so in, in the lesson outline, I've sort of, um, sort of discussed how we're going to do this, what our approach is going to be. Now, there are other ways that you might choose to, to accomplish this task if you were building this uh, app on your own, but this is what we're going to do. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to have a long, we're going to set up the map so that a long press, like if I, if I hit the, the map and hold down, will launch this dialog that allows the user to uh, enter their favorite place. And there's this list of information that they need to collect about the favorite place. And that's going to come in from kind of a, a couple different directions, right? Um, when I long press on the map, it's sort of natural for that to be the location that's used to trigger the add favorite place uh, sort of workflow or dialogue. Right, so that's how we're going to do it. Right, that kind of kind of makes sense. If you were using this, you might, you know, whenever we design these UI-based workflows, we want to think about what's intuitive. Right, we might need a little help screen at some point to kind of show people like, hey, long press on the map to add your favorite place. But we kind of want it to be something somewhat intuitive. Right, it, it would be weird if it was like, I don't know, like, like. Uh, swipe to add your favorite place or something like that. that doesn't make sense. I mean, a, a pointing at the map is kind of a natural way to indicate a location. And then the long press just allows us to avoid like miss, misfires, right? So if somebody just clicks on the map as they're, as they're dragging it or scrolling or whatever, or if they try to click on a place and they miss and it doesn't open the dialogue, we don't want that to trigger this. So we want a little more intentionality here. So the pointing is a good way to indicate a place on the map. And then the long press, leaving that finger down, allows us to ignore these sort of spurious events that might be triggered if we did this differently. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our, um, the first thing we're gonna do is talk about how to, how to set up the map so that we can detect these events. And that requires that we go back to our main activity and talk a little bit about how, how the map is set up and specifically how overlays are used in this mapping library that we're using, which is called OSM Droid. So OpenStreetMaps is a project that provides um, sort of open APIs to mapping data um, and OSM Droid is an Android library for incorporating those maps into our project. So the maps that you see uh, in the background that have information about the local area, those uh, were, they're actually generated by me using some OSM Droid code and they're hosted on one of our servers, but you know, that's using the OSM uh, library and their APIs and stuff like that. Now, you know, typically what we do when we're building a mapping based application is we use the map to provide location context, right? Uh, that's what makes the location meaningful. I mean, we could just have a square and you could be pointing at lat lawns, but without the landmarks and the intersections and information about what's on the map, it's hard to figure out what you're pointing at, right? I mean, that wouldn't be a very, like if you went to Google Maps and looked up how to get somewhere and it just showed you like a series of steps on the map, but there was no uh, background context about where you were, it'd be very hard to follow those directions. Um, and particularly when we're browsing the map, we want to see what's on there. So these tiles that have the information about what's on the map are drawn in the background. And then to enable us to create our own map-based applications, what OSM Droid allows us to do is to put things on top. So to essentially create what are called overlays that are uh, placed on top of the map that allow us to add information to the map, right? In this case, the information that we're adding is uh, the favorite places of people from our data set. And in a minute, one of uh, favorite places generated by the user that's using the app um, but we need to talk a little bit how that's actually done, about how that's actually done. So um, the, the main piece of code I want to look at together is this update shown places that's in main activity.java. And this is code that we may have sort of skipped over before. Uh, but now we need to understand a little bit more about what's going on here. Um, and so essentially, uh, so this the map view refers to the, the map view component that's being displayed by our UI. And what this does is, now this is a little piece of code that's essentially working around kind of an irritating bug in OSM Droid where when you remove the marker, sometimes the description bubble was left over. So this is essentially uh, closing all the description bubbles. And it looks like there's some discussion now in OSM Droid of fixing this so that this happens naturally. You would think that when I take a marker off, that info bubble would also remove, be removed from the map, but that's actually not what happens. And you can have these weird orphaned info bubbles, which is weird and broken. So. 
Um, so anyway, we do this first. Then we clear all the overlays from the map view. So essentially this removes all the extra information that we might be adding and gets us right back down to just the blank map that has the tiles behind it that we've configured as, as part of onCreate or, or yeah, onCreate. So essentially whatever tiles we're using for the map, that's the information shown in the background. That's all that's there now. So this is a, just a kind of a clean map. And then what we do is we go ahead and we put things on top of it. We're using this class that's provided by OSM Droid called a marker. And that essentially has that pin and it allows us to open the info view. And so it's kind of like this pre-packaged um, overlay that was really useful for uh, putting the markers on there for favorite places. But what we want to do now is we actually want to figure out how can we allow the user to click anywhere on the map. Um, and these overlays are not really the right, these markers are not the right approach. However, um, OSM Droid allows, allows us to add other types of overlays. So I'm going to go all the way down here uh, to the very bottom. Um, and right before we essentially, so this call down here causes the map to redraw. So we've added some information to it and now I kind of re want to re-render it so the user can see it. But there's one last thing I want to do, which is I want to allow the, the map view to receive various types of click events, touch events from the user. And the way to do this is to add an overlay. That overlay will exist only, it doesn't display any information, it exists only to receive events from the user. Um, and so let's let's see if we can do this. So we're gonna do map view dot overlays dot get overlays dot add. Um, and now what we need to provide is an overlay that can do this. And if I, let's see here, um, it might give me, no, this is, isn't very helpful. So what I need here, uh, if, you, if I hover over add, um, essentially what I need to do is pass it an overlay, right? And I could look up this documentation and I could figure out what descends from overlay. Uh, but in this case, I looked around a little bit on the internet and I found a couple examples and I found that there's something called a map uh, events overlay. Um, and so, and I need to use new because I'm creating a new map events overlay. Now this map events overlay, if I hover over, uh, requires that I provide it a receiver. So this is another example where I'm using a callback pattern. I need to provide, so essentially this overlay is going to uh, receive events from the map like clicks and touches, but it needs somewhere to send them. It needs someone to notify when those things happen. And so as we did before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this. Now, currently this is an error, and if I hover over it, it's going to tell me, uh, it's going to tell me, well, maybe I'll hit F2. Oh, did I? Nope, that's right. Let's see here. No, I don't care about this. Ah, right, okay, so there's a check style error. I'm not that worried about that, uh, but this error I am worried about. And this says, um, what I need is a class, this is an interface, right? I need a class that implements map events receiver. That's gonna allow us to receive these events from the map. And so what I need to do is have, now I could, pro I could provide an anonymous object. There are several different events, so this is not a functional interface meaning I can't use a lambda, but I could provide an anonymous object here, but it's actually a little easier. Uh, well, you can actually do this both ways. I'm just going to have a main activity implement that interface. Um, and so you'll see as soon as I implement that interface, now I have a part of that contract I have to fulfill, which is that I need to provide methods callbacks to handle these events. You'll see that there are several different events, but there's only two of them that I have to handle. One is called single tap confirmed helper, and the other one is called long press helper. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and hit okay. Uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna, in, uh, and I need to mark these as final, so check style stops complaining. Um, it's gonna add stub code for these two events. So now, and this is neat, right? Because I didn't have to do a lot of work here, right? I essentially did this one line of code up here. And now, remember with the search bar, the pattern that we use where we set up the search bar, we set the main activity as a listener, and then we're getting now events from the search bar when the text changes. This is very similar, except it's using a different part of our activity. It's using the map view. And we're saying, okay, I'd like to receive events from, from the map. Um, okay, just like we did before, let's go ahead and uh, put some log messages in. Single tap, uh, I'll just put single tap confirmed. Um, there's two type of events that we're gonna receive now. A single tap, which is just the user tapping on the map, and then a long press, which is the, the thing that we were, were interested in capturing, uh, which is, um, let's say long press, that's when I press on the map and hold there for, for a bit. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, app uh, in my emulator. Um, and of course, I should have warmed up an emulator, but I didn't. Oops. Um, and I think it will start one up. Uh, maybe it won't. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Should have done this already. Um, all right. But I'm I'm uh, loading up my activity. Uh, everything's centered properly. The places are still on there. But let's open up Logcat about at the bottom here. Um, and oh, this is. Uh, I think this is okay. Um, oh, did I do this? Did I make do, do the same mistake that? Let's see. I might have a, a bad. Um, a bad cast here, okay. Uh, well, that's weird. Let's see, on create, I have the search view, and I thought I imported this properly. Uh, and that is, that is the correct search view. I think this is working, okay. Sorry, um, let's go back down here and let's see if our log events are, are firing. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna click on the, click on the map. Um, let's make sure I can still move this, right? Um, and I, okay, down here, so I see these single tap, single tap, single tap, single tap, I'm seeing those. Now let's try a long press, right? Um, so I'm gonna hit and hold down, I see the long press, right? Hit and hold down, long press. It takes a second, right? Because I don't want to trigger it right away because if the user, you know, let's go, then it's a single tap. So there's logic within the map view that's distinguishing me these two, between these two type of events, but, I'm at a place now where I can receive these events. Now, the other thing I wanna look at is what information is uh, being provided to, um, to these callbacks, right? Because sometimes the callback will get some useful information. And in particular, what I wanna know is where on the map was the, did the click happen? Because this is the location. Remember, we need to assemble all this information. This is the location of the favorite place that I'm gonna add, or it's the location that I'm gonna pass to the dialogue that's gonna finish the process of creating the favorite place. Um, all right, so what is this geo point? If I hover over this, um, and, or I could just do something like this. Let's do plus p dot, and you'll see it has a get latitude, get longitude, um, plus, uh, get longitude. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and restart this. And then what we should see uh, when I open up Logcat um, is doot. Cool. Uh, and so it, you can see as I click on different spots on the map, the latitude, longitude are changing, but this is information that's being passed to my callback. So cool. I'm, I'm in good shape, right? In the sense that I have now the capability to receive events when the user clicks on the map. Uh, both short clicks and long clicks. Now the short click events, I'm not worried about because I'm not gonna use those for anything. You may decide later that you wanna use these for something. And, and so this is good uh, to get a sense of how uh, the, the pattern that we're using here to, to enable these events. Um, but it's really these long press events that I'm, that I'm interested in. And now I also realize I have this data that I got back from, from uh, that's being passed to the callback. And so now I have two, I have uh, several different pieces of information that I need. First of all, I'm able to initiate this, this um, dialogue that's gonna allow the user to add the favorite place to the map. And second, I have one of the pieces of information that I needed, which is, well, two really, the latitude and longitude. And so I'm in good shape. Uh, so this is the first step in passing the next test case, which is essentially uh, going to test whether or not when the user long presses on the map, we start this new activity properly and provide it with some of the information that it needs.